the crimped highlighted hair and like iridescent frosty look is giving very early 2000s and I think 10 year old me would be very proud of who I've become. <laughs> Hello! Welcome back to another edition of me reading through everything that our good friend and history dad Rick Riordan has to offer. <laughs> we've already done Percy Jackson, we've already done the Kane Chronicles, and now we have the Heroes of Olympus. My plan is to finish these in 10 days, hopefully. So that means a book every other day. We're halfway through The Lost Hero. Glad that we're back to starting at an important, like, monument type situation, this time the Grand Canyon. Also love that we're back on the solstice deadline. To back up slightly though, <laughs> so these revolve around three characters. So we have Jason, who wakes up on a bus full of kids and is like, hello, I have no memories. What is going on? Then we have his two friends, allegedly, we don't know. Piper, who is a half Cherokee. And then we have Leo, who is also Latino. Because we have new characters, it also means that we get to rediscover Camp Half-Blood, okay? We are back in it. We get to see it through new eyes, very much was able to soak up that part because as we know, I feel very strongly that more time needs to be spent at the camp. However, one thing that I do not like that is continuing, if not being more fortified in certain ways in this series, is the disrespect that the Aphrodite house is treated with. Okay, listen, I understand that Rick Riordan is like the literal like trained classicist or whatever, but through my very light research, Aphrodite is like literally not just a vapid bitch. She was very much associated with war and was the patron goddess of major cities. Like there's a lot more to her when we're talking about like desire and conflict and strife. So I just find his representation of Aphrodite House very annoying. I know there's only like so much nuance you can get across in order for it to be convenient, but like, hello. However, there's four and a half more books, okay? So I'm gonna let it, I'm gonna let it play out. <laughs> Not sure how I'm feeling about the Roman elements. Okay, I mean like I get it, like what else was he gonna do with another series? <laughs> but I swear to God, if there was just like Camp Half-Blood but for Romans, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lose it. Okay, I don't want that. I don't wanna know about that. <laughs> There's a Roman Camp Half-Blood. They switched Jason and Percy. <laughs> Finished The Heroes of Olympus, book one, and I did really, really enjoy it, okay? Even with the Roman stuff, I get that it's adding depth, okay? It's adding interest. I really enjoyed the new characters a lot. I thought they were fantastic. I also thought it tied in and like carried the story on really well from the Percy Jackson series. Thank goddess we got some nuance in terms of Aphrodite as well as her cabin in terms of talking about like the gifts and power of love and beauty and how to use those things, okay? Piper is an absolute badass queen, love her as a character. Oh, it's so good. I'm so glad we got that. <laughs> it's been a while and now we have a lot to talk about, <laughs> okay? So firstly, Em and I continued our viewing of holiday romance movies and we watched A Castle for Christmas and it was so bad. What is happening? <laughs> Most pertinently, however, I finally managed to finish The Sound of Neptune. It's not that I'm not enjoying the series, it's just that my brain can no longer handle information. And I think she is absolutely clocked out. I think we're gonna move this to a finish by the end of the year situation. It's pretty obvious this is about the other side of the Jason Percy switch. We're following Percy, ending up at the Roman camp. I still don't quite understand how that camp works or how it's organized, but like, okay. When it comes to the Roman stuff, okay, I know I've been talking a lot of shit, so let me explain. Comparing and contrasting between the Greek and the Roman camps and their kind of like ethos, if you will, really interesting, but it's not, the Roman is just not fun. Like, <laughs> it's not this like, fun chaos that we've come to know and love and expect from Camp Half-Blood. I also really liked the new characters that we found. We have lots of representation going on in this one, which is good. It's interesting in this case too, because I think the representation also has to really do where both of the characters are from. So first we have Hazel Levesque, who is from New Orleans, but like, spoiler alert, from the 1940s, okay? So it talks about how she is going to like a segregated school. And then we have Frank Zhang, who is Chinese Canadian from Vancouver. I do really enjoy the way that Rick Riordan writes about like crushes and that kind of stuff. You know, being like in love with your friends and whatever. And 
I don't know, I think Frank's character especially did a really good job in terms of like emotional development. The boy characters like he writes are very, they're very soft, okay? I appreciate that. What I do feel conflicted about though was the Amazon moment that we had. It did have a bit of nuance, so it was edging towards more of like the way that the Hunters of Artemis are portrayed. It definitely gave more nuance than like the Circe's um, island situation from book two, which I really wasn't a fan of, but is intimately connected as we come to know. My like big brain thinking about it that he's definitely not trying to do at all but what it did make me think of is kind of like the way that certain types of feminism can become incredibly like militarized and in some ways just reinforces patriarchal systems of power. I'm stressed out for the next book, okay? The Mark of Athena because I know where this is going. It's an Annabeth moment and I'm worried. I'm not looking forward to the Piper, Reyna, Jason triangle that I see coming. Guess who's finally halfway through the Mark of Athena? <laughs> new new plan is that I'm gonna finish this book by the end of the year. In this one, we start off by finally all reuniting, okay? Very tense because the Greeks are showing up at the Roman camp and like that never goes down well, okay? We have Annabeth reuniting with Percy for the first time in eight months, okay? And I absolutely love that she just like decked the shit out of him. I thought I enjoyed that scene greatly. And then because this is about them going to the ancient lands, okay, we're going to Rome. They're flying in the ship that Leo has fashioned. There's a scene where Percy and Annabeth accidentally fall asleep in the stables and everyone <laughs> loses their goddamn mind, which I thought was very funny. <laughs> very much appreciating that it's a lot less of love triangle-y situations than I was anticipating. Instead, in these books, we mostly get respect and solidarity amongst young women, okay? Which I'm very into. Also really enjoying that like the main conflict in this book is the differences in how the Romans and the Greeks interpreted essentially Athena. And overall, the series has been like very goddess heavy specifically the gods haven't really been doing much okay we have Hera as kind of the main instigator we have Gaia as the main antagonist we're also finally talking about slavery and how much of a huge part that was of the Roman Empire hasn't really been attributed to the Greeks yet, although obviously that was the case. Not only the civilizations themselves, but also the legacies of it and the ways that demigods participated in it. Also talking about not being taken seriously as a blonde, you know what I'm saying? Oppression. <laughs> Why did nobody warn me? <laughs> okay, I went into this book stressed, all right? But then eventually was like, that's just how Rick wants me to feel, okay? The real shit's gonna go down in like the last book, maybe the second to last. But no, they end up in Tartarus. Rick Riordan really said, fuck Percy and Annabeth. <laughs> I feel like he's gonna kill main characters this time. I feel it. Also, wasn't sure how we were gonna get two more books out of this plot, but wow, here we go. All right, next is gonna be the Nico D'Angelo special moment at the house of Hades and then who who knows also happy new year <laughs> I'm about to get in the bath to start reading the house of Hades but we need to talk about this dedication <laughs> to all my wonderful readers sorry about the last cliffhanger well no not really ha 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 but seriously I love you guys what a fucking binge <laughs> I had to get unexpected emergency wisdom tooth removal surgery and now I have the jowls of Winston Churchill. I have finally recovered to make my triumphant return to this vlog. <laughs> That's like two months long now, but I finally made it halfway through the House of Hades. <laughs> okay, we're in it. So the gang is split up. Percy and Annabeth are in Tartarus. Okay, and it's giving very much Sam and Frodo on Mount Doom energy. <laughs> We also finally get Hecate <laughs> involved in this narrative, okay? The second I read that there was a Hecate cabin now at Camp Half-Blood, I was like, hello, excuse me, more of this please. And so now we have like magic and the mist more intricately woven into the plot and I am all about it. I would also just like to unequivocally state that I am very much team Reyna. I hope she gets the justice she deserves because wow has my queen been through a lot. <laughs> One thing from the Mark of Athena that had continued on to this book, this narrative of Nico being in love with Annabeth and I kept being like, is he not? gay for Percy. Was that not confirmed at some point? Like I thought that was a thing and then it happens. We have him essentially being confronted slash kind of outed in a way by Cupid. <laughs> also Anubis, like I know from the King Chronicles is like not technically gay, but like 
Same archetype, okay? He's really out here writing characters for the gays. <laughs> we finished The House of Hades. The fourth book is done. One of the things I liked about this book, about Percy and Annabeth being back in TARDIS especially, is the fact that there's a lot of everything that they've done in the past, particularly in the first Percy Jackson series, coming back to bite them in the ass, which functions in a lot of good ways in terms of the narrative. One, it reminds us of how far we've come. And also we have a moment where like, really questioning the morality of like what they do in order to survive and the certain types of creatures they encounter that they don't necessarily give a second thought to. Speaking of individuals that Percy has given little thought to, Calypso's back baby! I absolutely loved this Calypso Leo moment. I'm a, I'm so into it. I know that we're not gonna get this easily. Okay, there's no way Rick Byron is just gonna give this to us, okay? But I remain hopeful, I guess. <laughs> Moving into the blood of Olympus, okay? I'm concerned, as one might imagine. It's also very short, okay? Especially compared to the other books. Like, hello, there's a lot going on here. We love a greasy braid. <laughs> we are like, making our way downtown. <laughs> like, there's not a lot left. This whole series has basically led up to this, okay, final battles moment, and we're still not there. It was a really interesting choice of narration for the final book in the series because we don't hear from Annabeth or Percy at all directly. Like obviously you like hear and see what all the other characters are doing. Maybe it's because in the last book it was focused like so much on them, it kind of makes sense to take a step back. But also like as the last book, this part of the required in universe, I'm assuming. But like, hello? Everybody shut up, it's finally happening. <laughs> I woke up early, I made my little decaf iced coffee because I can't drink real caffeine. Okay, because we're gonna finish the last hundred pages where shit is finally starting to for real go down. I know it's beside the point, okay? But Will Solis? Hello. Deserved more attention. Also, Will and Nico, maybe? Is Will super old? I don't remember. Anyway. <laughs> oh my god, Leo, I fucking knew it. Ooh. I needed a day to process it, but we finally finished the epic journey <laughs> that was reading The Heroes of Olympus. Did it single-handedly heal my inner child? Maybe. <laughs> We got justice for Aphrodite and her children and also Nico and probably Reyna <laughs> because there is so many more characters to follow, which again, I loved. It definitely made them a little bit less bingeable, especially because the third one on is like, they're dead, okay? Definitely part of the many shifts from the Percy Jackson series into more of like, a young adult moment. I also already mentioned a little bit about how much I like how Rick Riordan writes about little teenage relationships that are completely devoid of sexuality, <laughs> obviously. It ends up happening particularly with the boys in terms of talking about how much they don't want the people they like, their girlfriends, to like go into dangerous situations and like wanting to protect them but still recognizing and respecting that they are their own person. That's just such like a baseline throughout the series that I think is wonderful to read, especially considering when these were written in the 2010s and the absolute nightmarish stuff that was happening in young adult <laughs> literature at the time. To return back to Piper for one moment, because I think that's one of the ones he kind of had the most criticism with and recognized his limits, was the way that he did try to weave a lot of like Cherokee stories um, into Piper's narrative, I guess which I like understand why he would want to do that because he's trying to kind of make like larger points about civilizations and stories and the role that they play. It comes from a completely different like ontology and storytelling history and practice. It's not mythology in the way that we think of like Greek Roman. We've already got the setups for both the Magnus Chase series and the Trials of Apollo but like this really does feel like the end of an era. As much as I will most likely very much enjoy them, it's, I don't think it's gonna be the same though, saying goodbye a little bit in my heart for these. But thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye.